Hey, my name is Major Slack and welcome to Major Slack Videos, your first stop for titillating tactical Elden Ring gameplay. Today I'm going to show you how to put together a kick-ass frost bleed build in under one hour from the start of a brand new game. 50 minutes to be exact, that's right, five zero minutes and you'll be doing stuff like this. And this. And this. Now before you get into it, let me quickly explain about the bleed and frost status effects. Starting with bleed, you may have noticed through your hellacious travels in the lands between that some enemies will build up a blood meter when they attack you. When that fills up completely, they'll deal massive damage called blood loss. Using any weapon that causes blood loss buildup, you can inflict the same status effect on most enemies when you attack them. The game won't show you a bleed meter filling up, but it will be happening nonetheless, provided the enemy is not immune to blood loss. You'll know when you've maxed out an enemy's bleed meter and inflicted blood loss damage when you notice the enemy suddenly taking a huge damage hit accompanied by a big splash of blood. This blood loss damage hit is actually a percentage of the enemy's maximum health which makes bleed weapons especially powerful against boss enemies with big health bars. Frostbite works similar to bleed in that there is a hidden meter measuring the enemy's frostbite buildup. When the enemy's frostbite buildup maxes out, that enemy will take on a steamy cold frostbitten appearance and he will take 20% more damage from all hits for the next 30 seconds. During this time, his movements will also slow down, allowing you to quickly maneuver around him and do horrible things to him. Status effects like blood loss and frostbite are best applied with fast attacking weapons. Obviously, the faster you can build up the status effect, the better. The fastest weapons in the game are daggers, and you can also put a dagger in each hand and execute rapid fire dual wield dagger attacks by spamming the guard button. Now, there's nothing to prevent you from building up two status effects at the same time. So, why not put a bleed dagger in one hand and a frostbite dagger in the other? Spam the guard button to get dual wield dagger attacks and voila, you can stun lock enemies while simultaneously building up blood loss and frostbite which pays off with some devastating damage effects. And there you have it, your frost bleed build. Now like I said, you can put together an overpowered frost bleed build like this within one hour of a brand new game. How do you do this? Let me show you. Major Slack Videos. Alright, here we go. Frost Bleed Speed Build. 50 minutes from the start of a brand new game. You're going to start with the bandit. Name him whatever you like. I'm going to call my bad boy Bleed the Freak. Name that band. <laughs> Post a comment. Name that band. And you're going to start with the Lance Between Rune Keepsake. That's important. And I'm going to dress him up as the scruffiest little SLB you can imagine. And there we go. That's my bandit, Bleed the Freak. Now this is Gamer Slack down there in the trenches behind the gun and MC Dub Slack here in the rear with the gear on the microphone. It's going to go a lot, of, a lot faster like this. I will be fast tracking some parts of this run, some parts of this run rather, but I will show you the game clock at the end of the run to show you that it indeed did take 50 minutes to complete this build. Okay, 50 minutes and 48 seconds to be exact. Okay, so I'm just going to fast track this part because it's fairly linear, linear. Just follow this route and you can skip the first boss fight by simply jumping off the left. And you get your flask charges and discover the side of grace for convenience later on and take the elevator up and outside. Once you get outside, discover the side of grace here and then you're going to head north to the church. Instead of head to the, to the north. Just before you go inside the church, grab this golden rune too. This will give you an extra 400 runes. So now you have 3,400 runes. Discover the site of grace and then pick up the smithing stone. You're going to talk to the merchant. Here you're going to cash in. Q cash register sounds. Thank you very much. And. <laughs> Buy a crafting kit and two, count them, two cracked pots, no more, alright? Gonna need all the rest of the money for leveling up later on. Now, 
Henceforth, as we head through the woods to the north to the gate front side of grace, you're going to keep a sharp eye out for mushroom, smoldering butterfly, and root resin. Okay? It's kind of a natural path through the woods here. Just head to the north. You can check the compass at the top of the screen there. There's two root resin right here that you can pick up. If anybody gets in your face, just spam dagger attacks on them as I'm going to do right now. Get a close lock on and spam your dagger. And you'll eventually inflict a blood loss. There it is. There's the blood loss. See? No problem. Okay, so grab those two root resin. And that'll take care of your root resin needs. For this run, you're going to need three smoldering butterfly two mushrooms, and one root resin. Okay, that's all you need, but might as well collect all you see. A little extra can never hurt. And here is the gate front ruins site of grace. I believe this is called the gate front site of grace. And here we're going to talk to Melina. And I'll just fast track her dialogue. She's going to give us the horse and the ability to spend runes to level up. Have you had a serve? If you're new to the game, whatever she asks you, just simply agree. To the foot of the then it said, summon me. Ah, I bequeath you. It will some torrent treat him. There you go. So now we have the horse. Now we're going to go back to the Church of Ella and meet the Witch Rena, who's going to give us the Lone Wolf Ashes. And the spirit calling bell. May I have a pleasure? I am the wit. I'd heard and upon looking in the talk, I summon thou art but a call for. Ah, I was in Tritorrent's foreman. Tis a summon the spirit now, it is thine. Forgive mine, I doubt we shall again. How long will it be before the top? Okay, so now we can summon the lone wolves to help us out in boss fights and other tough combat scenarios. So get everything ready, get your spectral steed whistle ready to go, you're going to be summoning the horse often. And get your lone wolf ashes ready to go either in your pouch or in your item roll, somewhere convenient that you can cast it quickly. Alright, now we're going to level up. And some of you may be surprised, what we're going to do is we're going to invest in intelligence. You want to bump up intelligence to 12. Alright, intelligence up to 12, that's important. Alright, and back to the gate front side of grace. We're only going here for the whetstone knife, that's all we want. I'm going to wait till daytime because, you know, bad things come out at night. So you always want to operate during the day unless you specifically want to spawn a night enemy. Alright, so we're just here for the whetstone knife and some smoldering butterfly, if you're quick enough. This cooking pot here has a smoldering butterfly, you can just quickly grab that. And then hop over here and go that go down into the cellar here at Gatefront Ruins, and here you can get the whetstone knife, which will allow you to apply ashes of ore to your weapons. And this will also give up the storm stomp ash of ore. And for once, I'm not going to sell it. I'm actually going to keep it and use it for a specific purpose. Okay, so we're just going to retrace our steps back around here. I'm going like this because this is the easiest way to get the map. See, so dead ahead is the map pillar, and if you just gallop towards it, you bump right into it, it'll stop you, and you just grab the map. Instead of trying to fiddle around on your horse trying to grab it on the fly, this is the easiest way to get it. Having grabbed the map and the whetstone knife, you're just going to head to the west, up through Stormgate. Just gallop through here as fast as you can. You want to double jump your horse right here, so that the troll, the giant troll that's jumping down behind you, um, won't stagger you off your horse. Grab the smoldering butterfly on the other side. You're going to grab some mushrooms and that's it. And just continue on your way. And you can whack this guy just for kits and shakles. That's not necessary, but I always do that. It's kind of like a tradition. <laughs> I get a big kick out of it. My small pleasures. Um, <laughs> gather this golden seed here. And to avoid a whole bunch of wolves spawning in front of Stormhill Shack, you might as well gallop off into the field here and collect three smithing stones. Although that's not really essential for the first part of the build, but you might as well grab them anyways. And then back here to the west, and you're going to jump up on these rocks, blah, jump up on these rocks rather, and discover the Stormhill Shack side of grace. Yeah. 
here we're just for here for the stone sword key and you can talk to Rodrika. This is entirely optional. The only reason you probably want to talk to her is to get the jellyfish ashes for free. Otherwise it's entirely optional. You can just skip this part. Or if you don't talk to her and you want the jellyfish ashes, you're going to have to pay for them once you get to um, the round table. So here you go. There's this, the jellyfish ashes. Simply talk to Rodrika three times and she'll give you that as a present. That's it. Now we're going to gallop off to the northeast, up into this field here, where there's a lone troll hanging out. We're going here strictly for the strength, the strength knot crystal tier. Why do we need that slack? Because this will give your fire pots a lot of extra damage. It lasts for three minutes when you're using the flask of wonders physic, and it'll bump up your strength by ten points. So there you go, the strength knot crystal tier. Okay, so back to Stormhill Shack. I just went back to Stormhill Shack because I didn't want to be get into combat with the trolls. So I just went back to the nearest side of Grace, and now we're going to go to Gatefront. Back at Gatefront, we're going to gallop through here, quickly collect an, a couple more smoldering butterfly. Collect these on the fly. Just go up to this cooking pot here, grab the smoldering butterfly, and run over to the other side. There's another cooking pot over here. And that's it. Wham bam, thank you ma'am. And down to this side of grace here, Agil Lake North. Don't have to risk, just discover it. Head off to the left side here, look for the big sword sticking in the ground here, and gallop through the field of swords. This will line you up with this unmarked enemy camp which has the Fire Grease Cookbook. So just gallop up on the right side here, jump into the camp, there's the cookbook right here, quickly grab it, and some more smoldering butterfly. That guy's sleeping so it'll give you a lot of time. And just gallop out of the camp, off to the left, and over here, you see this alpha wolf sitting on top of these, uh, these stone runes here. Quickly grab the golden rune too, and that's it, we're on our way. Head to the east, and you're going to jump off the cliff into the Spirit Spring. You see that gust of wind right there coming out of the ravine? Jump onto that. That's a Spirit Spring, in case you're new to the game. This will prevent you from killing yourself as you fall on the horse. And press the jump button when you're on the bottom. They shoot way up in the air, and you'll land in this field here. And here, you're going to gather three Trinas of Lily, all right? And gather up some bear poop as well. That's not really necessary. Just get the Trina's Lily. And there's some more bear poop, aka gold tinged excrement. Huh. I call it bear poop. Hit up that artist shack uh, painting and discover the side of grace here. And that's it. Our business here is concluded. Now we're heading down to the sleep pot cookbook graveyard, which is basically to the northeast here. Jump off this little ledge here, and this is a high jump, but it won't kill you, don't worry, but just jump off here. And dead ahead to the east is a big golden rune graveyard with seven golden runes and the Fever's Cookbook 1, which is right, boom, there. Okay, so get that. Now you can make sleep pots and gather seven golden runes. That's how you know you got them all. So that's two. That's three. That's four. That's number five, and two more. Six and seven. And that's it. Now we're headed towards the third church of America. Okay? As you're doing all this, you want to make one fire grease, two fire pots, and. That's it. One fire grease and two fire pots. And jump off here onto this tombstone step, as I call it. The tombstone step here. You work your way down to the bottom. And. In the distance to the east, you see the Third Church of America. On the way, you can jump into this ravine and gather some more mushrooms. Not really essential, as long as you've got that count. That's three smoldering butterfly, two mushrooms, and one root resin. That's all you need. And down here to the Third Church of America. We're doing all this because I'm going to show you a dead easy way 
to get the Reduvia. Alright, so gather those two things, the Flask of Wondrous Physic, the Crimson Crystal Tear, and the Sacred Tear. And now we're going back to... <laughs> Gamer Slag is really bombing along here. Back to Agio Lake North. Having collected all those things. Okay, so I'm going to do some important things now. You're going to load up your Flask of Wondrous Physic. Or rather, first of all, use your Golden Seed to increase your Flask Charges. Use the Sacred Tear to increase how much your Flask fill up. Set your charges to 4 and 1. 4 red, 1 blue. Alright? That's going to be fine. And you're going to load up your Flask of Wondrous Physic with the Crimson Crystal Tear and the Strength Knot Crystal Tear. Load them up with both of those. And now you're going to make two Fire Pots. Okay, so you need two Fire Pots and one Fire Grease. Get them handy. Get them ready to go, either in your pouch or in your item roll, whatever you like to do, to have something super ready. And also make your Flask of Wonders physically easily accessible. Having done all that, we're going to gallop off to the southeast, basically down the road here. Just follow the road. Run past everybody. If you don't fuck with him, they won't fuck with you. Pardon my French. On this bridge, on the right side, you can carefully gallop up right in the middle of the bridge. You see a little break here and gather a smithing stone one. And then just stick to the right side. Stay away from that horseman there. Not quite ready to deal with him yet. Off to the right here in this field is a somber smithing stone one. This is important. Make sure you grab that. Right? Having done that, head to the east to the waypoint runes. It's dead ahead up this path here. You can't miss it. And you can see a little archway here. Head through the archway and down into the cellar as quick as you can before the magic rain comes down. This is the Mad Pumpkin Head boss fight. You're going to take your Flask of Wondrous Physic. You're going to go in and pop out your Lone Wolves. Pop out your Lone Wolves and just simply block. Block. Here comes the first hit. Tank the first hit and roll through. Just roll through. The Mad Pumpkin Head's going to leave you alone. Lock on and then throw your two fire pots, but make sure you throw them when the mad pumpkin head is either turned sideways or turned like has his back to you. And those fire pots will do massive damage. Now he's going to come at you again if he comes at you again. Either sidestep him or block. And at this point, you're going to take your fire grease and attack him from behind with rapid fire dagger attacks. And that's it. That'll finish him off easily. Get behind him. Rapid fire dagger attacks with your fire grease dagger. Obviously keep your distance if he comes at you. But you got your wolves helping you out, they should last. And finish him off. And there we go. Easy peasy. Easiest way to take care of him. Two fire pots. And grease his ass from behind with some fire grease. <laughs> and we're doing all this to make Selen the sorcerer is available as a merchant. Why Slack? So that we can buy the glintstone stars from her. All right? But for now, just simply discover the side of grace at Waypoint Rune Cellar and go back to the Church of Ella so we can sell off all the golden runes that we collected earlier. Wait, this wait, is the easiest way to, you know, to, um, to cash them in. Just simply go to a merchant and sell them. Goodbye. Okay, so now we have enough money to buy the glintstone stars. So back to the Waypoint Rune Cellar. Or if you're playing on the console, you might want to just stay there and cash them in manually by going into your inventory. Because I know you're playing on the console, you might have long load screens. And talk to Selen. Jam through her dialogue and eventually she's going to offer you some spells for sale. And you're going to buy the Glintstone Stars. Why, Slack? Because this is the easiest way to kill Bloody Finger Nerages. And the reason why you want to kill Bloody Finger Nerages or Nerius, I'm going to go with Nerages, is he's going to give up the Reduvia Blood Dagger. The absolute best thing that you can put, like, this is the key to this build, the Reduvia Blood Dagger. Alright, so having gotten the Glintstone Star spell and set your flasks to the opposite of what it was before, one red, 4 blue. 
head up into this field here, you're going to find this guy here. This guy always gives up a glintstone staff. Guaranteed drop. Guaranteed drop. So there's your glintstone staff. And you got intelligence up to 12. You got the glintstone stars. Now you can kill bloody finger Nerges easily. Who loves you? Slack loves us. That's right. Don't you forget it. Some of you may may have seen other people uh, show you this build, but they, they don't show you how to easily kill bloody finger Nerges. I know you can run around and wait for Yura to help him, but that's not enough. He will kill Yura. You can't just depend on Yura to kill him. He'll he'll kill him, and then he'll come after you. You need to help him out. Okay. From this point here, from um, Agil Lake North, what you want to do is slide straight across to the east, straight across to the east. Okay, and put a beacon right here at the edge of Murkwater River, and then you're going to go towards that beacon. Give this guy a wide berth once again, we're not ready to deal with him yet. Just go towards your beacon. Right on the edge of Murkwater River, right at that exact spot, I told you. And if you jump off the cliff at this exact spot, you won't kill yourself. You'll take some damage, but you won't kill yourself right here. Okay, jump off. You'll take some damage. Take your Flask of Wondrous Physic to refill your health, because don't forget it has the Crimson Crystal here, tier in here. And now Bloody Finger Nerges is going to invade. And simply lock on and spam out those Glintstone Stars and keep your distance. Keep spamming out those Glintstone Stars. You're going to have six, six shots per flask. And eventually Yura is going to help you. But you're on your own for a little bit. So six shots per flask. Refill. And when you hear that, that means Yura is coming to help you. Typically comes from the north side. So there he is. Get behind him. Let him um, aggro Bloody Finger Nerius and lock on and spam out those Glintstone Stars. Like I said, easiest way to kill him. This is going to be a no damage run. That is a no damage fight with Bloody Finger Nerius. Make sure you keep your distance, otherwise he'll target you. There you go. No damage. And he gives up, as a reward, the Reduvia. The star of the show. This is a dagger that inflicts blood loss and it also has a special skill called the Reduvia Blood Blade, which is absolutely fantastic. There's the Reduvia Blood Blade. Okay, so now if you put the Reduvia um, in your right hand and the Great Knife, which is what you start out with in your left, you now have dual wielding daggers. And now you have a basic bleed build complete. But hey, why stop here? Let's go add some frost damage. Make sure you discover Murkwater Cave here, because this is now available before you're locked out of it. You're locked out of here before you um, you could defeat um, Bloody Finger Narius. Okay, so once again, the Reduvia in your right hand and the Great Knife, which is what the bandit starts out with, in the left. And you're now dual wielding daggers. You could spam the guard button, the, gu the button that you normally use to block with your shield. Just spam that button to get dual wielding attacks. Rapid fire dual wielding attacks. Alright? So back to Storm Hill Shack and we're going to take the secret path up to Lyurnia. Just go through this giant archway here that Gamer Slack just showed you. You find this kind of like hidden path. I'm going to show you the map eventually in a moment or two to show you where this, where I am. Eventually we're going to run out of map, so you're right here, alright? And just going to basically follow this road off the end of the broken bridge. And this will take us into Lyurnia. Basically you've got um, Stormville Castle on your left, and we're bypassing that. Definitely grab this cookbook here, this will allow you to make soft cotton. Soft cotton is great. For example, on that cliff that we jumped off earlier where we took damage, 
If we had taken some soft cotton, we wouldn't have taken damage. We just been a, would have been able to jump off that cliff and no damage taken. Right? So yeah. And you can also land quietly using soft cotton. So just gallop through these uh this kind of like secret ravine here. Make sure at the end of this little run here you cut to the left, otherwise you go out the edge there. You can collect a whole bunch of roa fruit on the way here, which is what I normally do. But I'm not going to bother with that. I just grab that mushroom and that's it. Usually I collect all the roa fruit. Now, this is going to be a four part series. Um, in the second part, I'm going to focus specifically on combat training. I'm going to show you exactly how to use this build. This is what I've seen all over all over YouTube. People, you know, they show you how to make this build, but they don't show you how exactly to take it into combat. And I spent the last week uh, field training Forgive and field testing with this build. If you had, it seems torrent. Whereas I may, there is, but I can take gathering. Very well. Let my hand. All right, so this is the first site of grace that we discovered outside of Limgrave. That means that Melina will show you show up and offer to take you to the round table hold. Agree. If you're new to the game, whenever you meet an NPC, always agree with whatever they offer. I don't think there's anything that you would refuse that would be to your advantage. I'm trying to think of something. Uh, maybe some obscure choice. It's pretty much agree. Just be agreeable and say, yeah, I'll do it or whatever. Or I'll, you know, I'll go along with it. Okay, so having discovered Round Table Hold, go back to Stormhill Shack. And because Rodriga has now teleported to the Round Table Hold, she'll leave a little present for you at Stormhill Shack in the form of another golden seed. So make sure you go back to Stormhill Shack, grab that, and back to the lake facing cliff side of grace, which was the first side of grace we discovered outside of Limgrave. All right, and now you're just going to head down to the west. Just follow the path down here, down through the little canyon there. And we're going to bust into Lyurnia. The main purpose here is to get Somber Smithing Stone 2, 3, and 4. And I'm going to show you exactly how to get those. So gallop down here. You can just detour around this camp. By the way, the Reduvia has the special skill, the Reduvia Blood Blade. It's a short range uh, blood attack. It does physical damage, but it also builds up blood loss on the enemy. It's pretty devastating. I'm going to show you all about all that in part two when we engage in combat training, all right? Okay, so we got another flash charge. Gobble down that golden seed. I set my flash to 1 and 5. You should probably set it to 3 and 3. The Reduvia Bloodblade, which I'm just going to call Bloodblade henceforth, it only cost 6 FP. It's absolutely devastating for 6 FP. And I would definitely make a couple of fire pots because we're going after the map now. Okay, so here we don't have the map, but put a beacon on that map pillar right here and then I'll show you where to get the map fragment but it's guarded by these three uh, creepy crawly things I figure what they're called they can be um, a problem with our build for now so what I usually like to do is kill them kill the first two with a couple of fire pots and then I'll throw out a blood blade at the third one so just approach carefully or you could just run in and grab the map fragment, but I'm trying to make this accessible to gamers of all skill levels. Okay, so lock onto one of those guys, throw a fire pot, should be an instant kill. This one was not an instant kill because the branch blocked my way, so now I'm going to throw a blood blade. That's what the blood blade looks like. Now there's only one left, so we can finish him off with blood blade. Make sure you keep your distance from these guys because they have this kind of leaping attack that could really be devastating this early in the game. The bandit starts out with one of the lowest vigor stats out of all the um, all the characters. Okay, so there's the map. So we don't have much health now. Now you're going to put a beacon right there at that exact point. That's where the next Sight of Grace is. Last Gear Runes. And just go straight there. 
straight there. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Just go straight there. Discover it. Okay, and dead ahead you see a pagoda off in the distance. That's where we're going. But you don't want to go straight there. You want to hook around to the back. Because there's this revenant... I wouldn't actually call it a fuel boss, but he's a pretty devastating boss if you don't have any healing spells. So hook around the back here. That pagoda right there, that's your target. There's a way gate right in here. Make sure you grab this blood rose. Sneaky, sneaky. Show you right where that is on the map. And you can grab a smithing stone 3 here and then just quickly hop up onto the stairs and interact with the sending gate and travel to another location. And there's that, that revenant that I just told you about. This will teleport you up to the south side of the Academy of Rey Lucaria with this giant magic door. You can only get in through the magic door with the glintstone key. Now I'm going to pull a fancy maneuver here. You're going to gallop down here. And right here you're going to cut off to the right. Jump. Fall down. And jump just before you hit to the bottom. And you'll land on top of this sloping rock here. Okay, so once again you jump over the side. Just before you hit the bottom. Jump again so you land on top of that sloping rock. And whatever you do. Don't move until you stop moving. Until you stop sliding on the rock. Otherwise, the game will kill you. Okay, so once you land on safely on the rock, just if you start sliding, just let yourself slide. You come to a stop, and then you can continue. If you continue right away, the game will kill you. I don't know why this is the way it is. And head to the east. See that big sloping rock, tall sloping rock? That's where you're headed for. Head towards the right side. And there's this slanted rock on the right side that you're going to gallop up. Okay? right here gallop halfway up and you're going to jump off your horse and go into sneak mode right here go into sneak mode slide down here stay in sneak mode grab the glintstone key and if you stay in sneak mode all the way you can quickly fast travel back to the south ray lucaria gate without arousing the dragon there's a dragon there yes there's a dragon there so now that you have the glintstone key you can go through the magic door go through the magic door and this will put you right next to the main academy gate side of grace. Discover this side of grace. Look to the northeast and you're going to have like a little teleporter here, this magic teleporter. Take this magic teleporter. This will teleport you up to the northeast side of Lyurnia. So we're making a lot, like covering a lot of ground very quickly just by using these way gates. Okay, so that's where I am now. Okay, that's where you'll be, hopefully. Make sure you discover the side of grace here. Just discover it, that's all you have to do. You don't need to rest. Then you're going to turn back to the southeast and you're going to jump off the cliff. This is our target right here. See that little orange circle there? That's the Ray Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. Okay, you're gonna jump off the cliff right beside this rock pillar. Okay, off the left side and jump again. And this will put you right on top of a spirit spring that prevents you from killing yourself. And go towards the beacon that I hope you put on the um, the orange circle there. There's a big walking mausoleum. You know the rule. Don't fuck with it and it won't fuck with you. Pardon my French. Here is the Ray Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. We are here for two things. Somber Smithing Stone 2 and Somber Smithing Stone 3. They're right here, right at the very beginning. Just waiting to be picked up. Easy peasy. Now this place is full of miners. Miners are quite resistant to slash damage and that's all our dagger does is slash damage. And it's a pretty weak slash weapon. So you're going to use Reduvia on these guys. The Reduvia Blood Blade. It will take four blood blades to cause bleed. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there is four. Okay? The fourth blood blade will cause the bleed. Same thing with this guy. Count them. One, two, three, and four. Pick up your sombers too. 
and jump up behind this kind of altar here and get your somber three. And that's it. We're out of here. The other way is like. Now all we need is somber, f a somber smithing stone four and a somber smithing stone five. Elevator up. Yeah, I spent about a week field training and field testing this build. I, I was just having a ton of fun. There's so many things I discovered on how to use this build. I'm going to show you about all that in part two, combat training. So many things that a lot of other guys who talk about this build or show this build, they, just, they, don't, they don't cover it at all. This build is a hell of a lot of fun once you know how to use it. There's an extra somber three here that you can pick up. Basically what we're doing now is we're heading towards the north. You're going west a little bit and you're going to hook around and eventually push north to this little grassy knoll. Unfortunately I can't show you on the map because there is no map. We don't have the map fragment. So just basically keep the cliffs on your right side and you're going to hook around eventually to the north. And then you're going to head due north. And if you look up I'm going to look up, see that I'm right on the edge of the map, so I can't really show you the destination because we don't have that map fragment yet. But if you look up, I hope Gamer Slack's going to look up, look up. There you go. If you look, see to find the tallest peak at the very top, just use that as your bearing and head towards that. Just head due north. And there's this little grassy knoll here where we're going to pick up a somber forest right on a dead body sitting in a chair. Now I made a little mistake here. I didn't discover the Site of Grace, which is just off to the right here. Here's your Somber 4. It's right behind me now. So I would definitely go behind me, go into the ravine, and discover that Site of Grace before you continue. It's not a big deal, but you know, it's just be really convenient right there. And now we're going to head to the southwest and get onto the beach. And you see this cliff off to our right? there that cliff there you want to find the spot where this cliff eventually comes down to meet the land and then we're just gonna get on that cliff and double back okay so just keep following along here to the southwest keep going along and eventually the cliff slopes down to meet the beach right here and simply gonna turn to the northwest and find this map pillar here. This will give us the north, sorry, the west Lyernia map. Now all we need is the central map. We're going to get that in part two. We don't really need it now. Make sure you discover this side of Grace here. Rest up. Now we're going after the Hoarfrost Stomp Ash of War. So basically head north through King's Realm Runes. And there's kind of like um, a fake door or a fake wall at the very end. You could dispel it by simply hitting it with your sword. Or I have a new method of doing this. Just simply jump your horse into it. And that will dispel it. Dispel the fake wall. And discover the Sight of Grace. rest to get all the enemies to stop you know get off your ass and you want to put this storm stomp ash of war on your great knife okay storm stomp ash of war great knife and put a beacon right here in this little pond now dead ahead is the carry a manor and it's going to be raining down all this magic holy hell on you if you stick to the cliffs on the right side none of that magic rain will hit you. So that's all you have to do is remember to stick to the cliffs on the right side and eventually head directly towards your beacon. Now I know the great knife is in your left hand. If you want to hold it in two hands hold down the event action button and press the guard button. That will two hand your left hand weapon. 
okay, which will allow you to use the skill, the Storm Stomp skill. So now you're right here in the pond where we put our beacon. And this, see the little footy prints there? That's what we're after. It's an invisible teardrop scare. We have to kill it. You can tell when it's coming because you'll see the little footy prints in the, in the water. And as it's approaching, you're just going to use your Storm Stomp skill to create this area of effect damage attack, which will kill it. Because you can't see it. Here it comes, here it comes. Storm Stomp. Boom. There. Easy way to, to get that guy. Now we have the Hoarfrost Stomp Ash of War. And let's go back to the round table to regroup. Now you're going to put Hoarfrost Stomp on the Great Knife with the Cold Affinity. Alright? And now we're going to upgrade the Reduvia up to plus 4 because we got a Somber 1, Somber 2, Somber 3, and Somber 4. And we got the money to do it, so now our Reduvia is plus 4, way more powerful. And now we're going to go to the first step side of Grace. From the first step side of Grace, head to the east. Put a beacon right there. It emits that kind of like all that junk on the map there. That's the Dragon Burnt Runes location. And head there. Just jump off the cliff right next to the two birds there. Now we're after a Sombra Smithing Stone 5, which we can get out in Kaelid. And this is the fastest way to get to Kaelid. It's a special teleporter chest in the in the cellar of Dragon Burnt Runes. Watch out though, there's five rats down here. You can instantly kill them with the Reduvia. Or rather, the Blood Blade. The Reduvia Blood Blade. Typically, it's an instant kill unless they're coming directly at you. Then it'll take two Blood Blades. Should be no problem though. Okay, kill all five rats. Head to the back, open the door. And this treasure chest is not a treasure chest, but in fact a transporter trap. Which we're going to use to our advantage. This will teleport us out to Celia Crystal Tunnel. In Celia Crystal Tunnel, you can hang out there. Try to whack some of the miners. Get some more smithing stones, but we're not, not going to bother with that. We're just going to sneak out. Make sure you grab this gravity stone stuff here. We can sell that for a pretty penny. Wait for this miner to pass by the, the rock there. See the little rock? He passed by the little over the rock. And now we're just going to simply sneak out by circling around this way here. Make sure you slow sneak over those sacks so that you don't accidentally stand up. And then from here, just stick to the left side and rapid sneak all the way out. And you'll get out no problem. Make sure you stick to the, the left side though. And that's it. You're out. Now all we have to do is rest at a side of grace. Because otherwise you won't be able to fast travel. So you grab this rock grease so we can sell that off. And rest. Okay, now we can fast travel again, and we're going to go out and cut to the right. Keeping the mountainside on your right side. Okay, so stick to the right side. And gallop all the way down here. This is another invisible teardrop scarab. I believe it gives up the poisonous mist ash of war. We're not going to bother with that. Now, if you, there's a big red teardrop scarab. You're going to find this little skinny ravine right here. Head to the north through this ravine. You're going to pass by a whole bunch of blow-up worms, as they call them. There's a blow-up worm. Make sure you don't dawdle through this, because you'll get, well, you get blown up. Head all, <laughs> head all the way to the end here, and grab yourself a somber smithing stone 5. And that's it. Get the F out of dodge. As you're on your way back, if you see any worms spinning around like this, just wait. 
because they will knock you off your horse. And they could potentially kill you. So just take your time, let them calm down, and then make your great escape. And once again, you can stick to the right side here, and you're gonna stop at this kind of like this big hump branch right here. That's what I call the hump branch. Turn to the south, and this is the Street of Sages Ruins. You're looking for a big wide staircase dead ahead to the south, right here. Head up here, cut to the left into the corner, and grab the entire Traveler's Armor set. That's all we want from here. I know that this location also has the Meteorite Staff and the Rock Sling Spell. We don't need them. Don't need them for this build, so don't waste time getting them. And follow my route here up to the side of Grace here. Discover that. And let's go back to the round table to regroup. And we have a somber smithing stone 5, so let's upgrade the Reduvia to plus 5. Okay, so we already have a mid-game level weapon within 40 minutes. The first 40 minutes of the game we have a mid-game level weapon already. And that's it. Take a bow, bleed the freak. Here we go, 41 minutes. Take a bow, bleed. Oh, wait a minute, hold up here, hold up here. We're not done yet. Not done yet. Let's make a ton of money. Yeah, I knew there was something missing, eh? Let's go back to Waypoint Rune Cellar. Yeah, we can make a ton of money. We have a bleed weapon. Back to Waypoint Runes. Rest until daytime. And we're here to get a gold pickle foul foot, which is just up the hill outside. Okay, so you can hop on your horse. Head to the north. Up this hill here, there's three foot soldiers here. You can easily kill them all with a blood blade each. Blood blade. Blood blade. And blood blade. Grab that gold pickled foul foot. And now we're going to go back to the Third Church of America. And we're going to use another secret sending gate. Make sure you hook up the gold pickle file foot. Get it ready to go. There's another secret sending gate here which we can use to get quickly to the north side of Caled. It's right here in this little ravine here, hidden behind this bush here. Take that. This will teleport you to the Bestial Sanctum which is on the north side of Caled. Go in here. Discover the side of grace for easy access later on. And then you're going to hop on your horse and gallop to the south. Make sure you give this guy on the right side of the screen here, give him a wide berth. That's actually a boss. Generally speaking, if you don't go near him, he won't do anything. <laughs> Once again, you know the golden rule. Don't fuck with him. He won't fuck with you, pardon my French. Make sure you grab uh, <laughs> the golden seed here. And head due south towards the end of the bridge there. And there's another side of grace there, a very important side of grace. The Ferrum Great Bridge. And we're just going to cross the bridge. We are ultimately headed towards Fort Faroth. Fort Faroth has a big giant white dragon. It's a sick dragon. He's helpless. Kill him and you'll make a ton of money. For those of you who are new to the game. As for this dragon, don't worry about it. You can just gallop right past him. He's very slow to react. I've never been attacked by this dragon 
let alone taking damage from him. So just gallop right past him. And once you get to the end of the bridge, you want to stick to the right side. Just stick to the cliff side on the edge of the cliffs on the right. Because there's another boss enemy on the left that we're going to be passing by. I think it's called the Putrid Avatar or the Erdtree Avatar. He's absolutely hellacious. We are in no way, shape, or form ready for him. So just uh, leave him alone. And just keep heading down here. Down this road. And eventually going to discover the Dragon Barrel Fork Set of Grace. Okay, you don't have to rest and continue along here. Once again, stick to the cliff, the edge of the cliff on the right side to get past this little dragon here. And you're going to watch the cliffs on the left side. Hope Gamer Slack is going to show you the cliffs on the left side. Come on, Gamer Slack, add a boy. See, when this comes down, it slopes down to eventually meet the bottom. When it does that, you're going to double back. Double back on the edge of the cliff. Basically towards the east. And if you take a look off to your right, there is the giant white dragon. He's completely helpless. But it is actually an enemy that you can kill for a ton of money in case you're new to the game. So just gallop along the length of this giant white dragon and behind him is a sight of grace the Fort Feroz Sight of Grace. Now he has a giant health pool. It takes you a long time to kill him with normal weapons. But, it doesn't take you that long at all to kill him with the bleed weapon. Because don't forget, bleed, bleed weapons inflict the blood loss damage. And blood loss is always a percentage of the enemy's maximum health. I'm just showing you where I am on the map, although it doesn't really make much difference as uh, this, this is not like uncovered. Okay, so rest of this set of grace to get everybody to calm down. And you're going to get back around the other side of the dragon. One, there we go, one third times the charm. Right here. Okay. Now, with your basic setup with the Reduvia in your right hand and the Cold Great Knight in the left, just spam the guard button to do quick dagger attacks. And every once in a while you're going to get a bleed and that's it now I'm just speeding it up here because th this is pretty routine this will take you about four minutes real time okay and you see every once in a while if you see the top right corner of the screen you see I'm getting bleeds or rather blood loss just before he's almost dead you're gonna take your gold pickled foul foot which will earn you 30% there I just took it that, that'll earn you 30% extra runes on enemy kills for 3 minutes. And I'm slowing it down here for the finish. And there we go, we killed it. And watch the bottom right corner of the screen. The money's going to start rolling in for 65,000. And then because we took the gold to go foul foot, we get an extra 30,000 or so. So you should be up to over 100 thousand runes who loves you slack loves us that's right and don't you forget it what do i do with all my money slack well actually um yeah that's a good question <laughs> we have one hundred thousand runes to, to spend the build actually could go in several different directions um you could spend all your money leveling up vigor and create a tank which is what i recommend because you're going to spend a lot of time in close combat or you can spend all your money leveling up Arcane and create a glass cannon. We're going to go the tank route. For now, I want Bleed the Freak to take a bow. And then I'm going to show you the game clock at the end of this run. There we go. 50 minutes and 48 seconds flat. And stay tuned for part two where we're going to engage in a whole bunch of combat training. I'm going to show you exactly how to spend your money. Thanks a lot for watching. If you thought this was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, post a comment, and most importantly, subscribe to make sure you get all my videos hot off the press. 
All right, see you next time for part two. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1, that's all. That's all it takes, all right? Thanks a lot, really appreciate it.